Hi, welcome and thank you for joining us for Certification Credentialing, What Does It All Mean to Me? with Margaret Erickson, who is the Executive Director of the American Holistic Nurses Credentialing Center. Thank you, Mickey, for joining us. How are you today? I am good, thank you. I appreciate having this opportunity to talk with everybody. Thank you. Oh, fantastic. All right, so we are all set and ready to begin. If you would like to go ahead and tell them what it's all about. Excellent. Thank you, Nicole. So we're going to be talking about certification and credentialing. What does it all mean to me? And Nicole just gave a very nice introduction. My name is Margaret Erickson, and I look forward to being with you over the next hour. Next slide, please. So I want you all to sit back and take a deep breath. You'll hear what you need to hear, and you'll learn what you need to know, and the PowerPoint will be available for you at a later date, and we're always a phone call or an email away. So welcome to this part of our journey. Next slide, please. Using language consciously and intentionally is extremely important. What we say has meaning, and what we say takes us down different paths. If I talk about a patient as being manipulative versus feeling a sense of out of control, you have very different feelings. If we talk about people having challenges or limitations, that is very different than the feeling you get when we talk about someone being handicapped. Today we're going to talk about language that is used loosely that relates to the certificate program, certification, credentialing, and professional licensure. Our goal and intent is for everyone to be on the same page and understand what those terms mean. Next slide, please. Certificate programs may be a weekend long, they may take a week, they may be several months, or sometimes a couple years. Individuals seeking out certificate programs are looking for knowledge and skills that builds on knowledge and skills that they're already using in their profession, their occupation, or trade. It tends to have a narrow focus usually does not require that predetermined standards are set and then met at the end of the program. And <clears throat> the programs are um, finished, when they're finished, you get a certificate of completion. The Birch Tree Center offers an excellent program, the Integrative Healing Arts Certificate Program, that helps nurses from an ex in experiential and cognitive perspective prepare for holistic nursing certification, for utilizing holistic nursing skills in their practice, to getting in touch with themselves, et cetera. It is a certificate program, and after you complete the 122 hours, you do get a certificate of completion. But it does not offer you national credentials, and you are not considered nationally certified when you finish any type of certificate program. Next slide, please. Certification, on the other hand, is a process in which a non-governmental agency or association certifies an individual that is already licensed to practice a profession. Predetermined standards are specified by that profession. It is done within the context of the specialty, and certification only occurs when those standards have been met by that individual. Of course, the purpose of certification is to assure that stakeholders know that that individual has mastered a body of knowledge, and has skills within that particular specialty area. That certification is a sign that that individual knows what they're doing and is competent in that specialty area. Next slide, please. Professional certification is a voluntary process. Some institutions or employers may require that you get certified within the first year. Some may require that you are certified to get the job but it is a voluntary process. Certification is not mandated. It is a time-limited recognition. It might be for a year, it might be for three years, it might be for five years, but you are not certified over a lifetime. You have to continue to show that you have continued competence in that specialty area. It verifies that predetermined standards have been met and it allows you as a certificate to use the earned credential. Certification usually includes experiential and cognitive requirements. In other words, that you've met so many practice hours and that you have so many continuing education hours acquired. 
It's used by the profession to identify members who have met legal and psych psychometric requirements. And the holder of professional certification is required to use the credentials appropriately, and we call those individuals certificates. Next slide, please. Credentialing, on the other hand, is used to designate that an individual, a program, possibly an institution, meets standards that have been set by a governmental or non-governmental agent. The standards can be minimal and mandatory or above minimum and voluntary. Credentialing is used very inconsistently. It might be used to denote that you have licensure or that you're registered or that you've acquired approval for your institution for a program. It might also be used as a term for certification or endorsement. The credentials or the marks or stamps of quality communicate to the stakeholders that you are credentialed. And what's important about credentials is that you have to renew them and you have to assure continued quality by that renewal process. And if you are not meeting your requirements, or the standards of competency, those credentials can be withdrawn. Next slide, please. Professional licensure is the documentation that you have met basic standards of safe care delivery. For the nurses, we have to pass the NCLEX in order to have professional licensure. Our license denotes that we have official or legal permission to engage in a regulated and restricted professional business nursing. There are many um, professions that require licensure. For us, at the baccalaureate level, our licensure, or our, the ADN level, basic entry level, the licensure comes through the passing of the NCLEX examination. At the graduate level, some of the licensure is acquired through certification, such as what you would find with a nurse practitioner, a nurse midwife, or a nurse anesthetist. Next slide, please. Thus, licensure represents the proof of the ability to provide basic safe care. It's at the entry level. Certification represents that you have demonstrated the acquisition of knowledge and a set of practice competencies or skills, sophisticated set of skills, that is done within the specialty and it is beyond licensure requirements. Next slide, please. Now, in 2003 and 2010, the Institute of Medicine came out with some reports, and there were implications for nursing. So there are implications for certification in health care reform. One of the things that the IOM talked about was the very important issue of allowing nurses to practice, practice to the maximum of their ability, to use nurses to the fullest of their capacity. Along with that was the recognition that in order to use us as professional health care providers to the maximum of our ability, we had to participate in lifelong learning. We had to have lifelong professional growth and development. Certification is one means of a measure of optimal standards and best practice. And this was illustrated and became more visible through these reports that certification was one way of supporting lifelong professional growth and development. These reports also increased the public awareness of the meaning and value of certification, with an emphasis on the link between certification and competency utilizing best evidence. This next slide, please. So I want to talk briefly about nursing specialties. There are many nursing specialties out there. Um, we have wound care, we have critical care, we have emergency room, we have public health, pediatric, holistic nursing. All of these specialties are required and identified because they have a body of knowledge and a set of sophisticated skills that are within the context of their specialty. In addition, they all have a defined scope and standards of practice, the who, what, when, where, how, and why that a cardiac care or critical care or a pediatric nurse or holistic nurse, how they would practice. Specialty certification represents 
that the certificate has achieved a level of competence both in a knowledge base and a set of skills. It also allows healthcare agencies a pool to draw from in which they can get competent, empowered caregivers. Next slide, please. For the healthcare consumer, the process of certification does validate that these certificates have demonstrated knowledge acquisition in a specialty area and that they have that special set of skills within the specialty. But more importantly for the healthcare consumer, the certification designates that the individual has competence and is able to provide safe, effective, correct care. This provides the healthcare consumer with a sense of safety, security, and profession, protection. Excuse me. As um, a consumer, I needed to have oral surgery, and it was very important to me that my oral surgeon be board certified. So I think that we are becoming more aware um, to the importance of certification, and, and it's becoming more of a visible issue for consumers. And as that um, evolves and as people become more aware of certification and wanting certified healthcare providers, certification will be more important to the specialties. Next slide, please. There are barriers to certification. They include time. All of us are short on that resource. Money. There is a fear of failure for some individuals. The certification might not yet be recognized. Um, often, if a specialty is not well known, the hospital may say they don't recognize it. But if they know that the certification is accredited and is ANCC magnet recognized, usually certificates are supported then at the institutional level. And there may not be a lack of support, either from the institutions or perhaps from your colleagues. These are all barriers to certification. Next slide, please. So the question then, is the journey worth it? Is it something I want to use my time, energy, and resources for? Because most of us have a sense of being overloaded or overwhelmed. Um, very few of us, especially individuals that tend to do professional growth and development, um, we always have something going on. So is this journey worth it? There is a professional commitment that's involved when you start this process. It allows you to acquire a network of colleagues, if that's important to you. It empowers you as a caregiver. It validates your knowledge, skills, and um, expertise to the stakeholders. For many institutions or organizations, hospitals, agencies, it supports and they recognize that it demonstrates professional advancement. And then there's the intrinsic rewards and self-affirmation of knowledge and competencies that many um, nurses are seeking. So the question then, is the journey worth it? Next slide, please. So as you think about certification and you think about utilization of personal resources, money, time, what it will take, you need to remember that you don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. Next slide, please. And our goal here at AHNCC, and I believe in, in most specialty organizations, the goal is to facilitate you one step at a time so that you are not overloaded and so that you are not stressed out but are able to achieve what your goal is. Ultimately, that's being a certificate or certified in your specialty area. Next slide, please. The certification process is a process. There are requirements to qualify. You have to have an educational degree. You have to have an RN license. You have to have met a practice component, so many hours within a certain period of time. And you have to have a knowledge base. There's the application, the preparation, the national exam, and then recertification. This process is pretty typical for most specialty um, certifica certifications. Next slide, please. This slide shows examples of specialty certification requirements, comparing the cardiovascular nursing certification with the holistic nursing certification. There are standard requirements that you see within most specialty certifications, such as unrestricted RN license within the U.S. state or territory, 
equivalent of 2,000 hours of clinical practice, or maybe it's two years. For the cardiovascular, they need to have had those hours within three years. In holistic nursing, it's one year full-time or 2,000 hours in the last five years. We require 18 hours more of CEs. This is going to be differentiated according to the specialty certification you're seeking. One of the things that we have that a lot of certifications don't have is we have multiple levels of certification. So we have two that are considered basic and two exam levels that are available for the advanced level holistic nurse and advanced practice. Many of the certifications require an RN license, but they don't differentiate by the educational levels. The last thing that I will say is different from our certification process than many of them is we do have a voluntary, optional, self-reflective assessment. We found through the years that people that choose to do this are better prepared and equipped for the examination. But it is completely voluntary and optional. It is not required. Next slide, please. So I'm going to talk now specifically about certification in holistic nursing. We do offer certification in holistic nursing and nurse coaching. My focus today will be on holistic nursing, but I will make a couple comments as I go through about the nurse coach certification. Next slide, please. The American Holistic Nurses Credentialing Corporation mission is to advance holistic, person-centered care, which emphasizes clients as the experts of their own experience and nurses as instruments of healing. AHNCC does that as we assume full administrative authority and responsibility over the credentialing programs. Our programs, holistic nursing and nurse coaching, are based in the values, knowledge, and skills of holism. Next slide, please. Our examinations and processes are con conducted according to national standards and HNCC is accredited by the Accreditation Board for the Specialty Nursing Certification. That means that we are accredited by the credentialing arm of the American Board of Nursing Specialties. Our examinations are also ANCC magnet recognized. Next slide, please. So I want everybody to take a slow, deep breath. We've talked about intentional language use, differences between certificate programs, certification, credentialing, and licensure. And now I'm going to focus more specifically on certification of the holistic, for the holistic nurse. It is a process. It does take time. And it is one step at a time. When it's done one step at a time, you will reach your goal in the least stressful and the most positive um, manner possible. Next slide, please. There are requirements, So what are they? There's an educational requirement, an RN license requirement, a practice requirement, and a continuing education requirement. Next slide, please. All nurses who apply for holistic nursing or nurse coach certification are required to have graduated from an accredited, recognized nursing program. There are very few programs in the United States that are not accredited. If you have a question if your program has been accredited, you can contact us and we can answer that for you. Next slide, please. We require a current, active, unrestricted U.S. registered nursing license. Now, this is obvious. Um, it's almost a mute point because if you're practicing in the United States, you have to have a license to practice. Um, for nurses who are applying for certification, from other countries. You may have an RN license, a current unrestricted RN license from your country if your intent is to stay in your country and you would be certified according to having met those standards. Of course, if you come to the United States, before you can practice, you have to meet the requirement of acquiring a U.S. license and at that point then you would be able to also use your credentials here in the United States. Next slide, please. There is a practice requirement. And the question is, how is nursing practice defined? This is probably the number one question we get. Is it defined according to the setting where you work, whether it's geriatrics, critical care, ER? 
or is it defined by the population you serve, patients undergoing rehabilitation or pediatrics? Is it defined by the specialties practitioners, or is it defined by the nurse's philosophy? Next slide, please. Holistic nursing practice is a way of being. It's how we show up. It is how we present ourselves and interact with others. It is not the tasks we do. So holistic nursing practice is not defined by expertise and modalities, aromatherapy, mindfulness, meditation, etc. Many of our holistic nurses use those healing tools, but that's not what defines them or how we define our practice if you believe that people are greater than the sum of their parts, if you believe in unity that man cannot be separated from his environment, his cultures, his values, his beliefs, if you believe that all aspects of our being, our emotional, our cognitive, our spiritual, our physical, are equally important and that they impact and interface with each other on an ongoing basis and a continuous basis, if you believe that you are gifted with the most sacred vulnerable moments of someone's life, you are practicing holistic nursing. You can practice in any setting with any population because your philosophy guides your practice regardless of the people you are working, whether it's an infant, uh, 95-year-old taking his last breath, whether it's an independent practice, whether you're doing research or an educator working with a business. Your holistic nursing practice is defined by who you are and how you practice and your philosophy. It's not defined by the tasks that you do. Next slide, please. There is a continuing education requirement to apply. It is 48 CE hours related to holistic nursing theory, research, or practice. It can be related to major concepts such as mindfulness and meditation or stress reduction, self-care, intention, presence, health, wellness, and well-being. It can be related to toxic topics such as nutrition or herbs and supplements. It can re be related to healing modalities. What it is not related to is medical aspects of care because holistic nurses deal with health, wellness, and well-being. That is our focus and our goal. And the idea is that CE programs that you take will build a knowledge base that will help you prepare for the exam but will also be utilized in your practice. Next slide, please. The National Certification Examination is offered twice a year, in the spring and the fall, over a two-week period. It is a computerized online exam. It is multiple choice, single answer, no short answers, no essays, all multiple choice, single answer. There are sites throughout the country, several hundred sites, and when you are um, have applied and you're ready to register, you will send in your documentation, you will set up an appointment for a date and time and location that you want to set. It is first come, first serve, so it's important that as soon as you get the paperwork from the Professional Testing Corporation who handles applications and test administration that you register for a date, time, and location. There is an online tutorial offered by the Professional Testing Corporation that allows you to get in and see how the test format and processing goes so that you're familiar with it before you sit for the exam. We have heard that this is a very helpful tutorial and I encourage you to use it. Next slide, please. There are five examinations. We offer four in holistic nursing and one in nurse coaching. The first one, the H and dash BC, is offered for ADNs or non-baccalaureate prepared nurses. The next one is offered at the baccalaureate level. It is the HNB, BC examination. These two are considered basic examinations. The advanced include the AHN and the APHN. Both of these exams require that you have um, graduated from a holistic, excuse me, graduated from a master's prepared program in nursing. So the graduate program has to be in nursing. The APHN exam requires that you have an APRN license. This is not a licensure exam at this point. It's important to note that you may be new to holistic nursing and not really feeling like you want to test at the AHN level. That's okay. You can choose to test at the HN level or the HNB. 
as long as you meet the educational requirements, you can test for that level of exam or any exam below it. The nurse coach board certification exam is the only one we offer at this time in the role of coaching, and it does require a baccalaureate to sit for the exam. Next slide, please. Preparation, your study plan. It includes where, when, and how. I strongly encourage everyone sitting for this exam or another specialty exam to have a study plan in place, and the preparation is critical for you to do the best you can on your examination. Next slide, please. Research has shown that if you study in different locations, you retain the information better. So change things up. Maybe you're studying and having a cup of cocoa or coffee at Starbucks. Maybe you're at the park, the dog park. Or maybe you're sitting on the back porch. Or maybe you're in your living room. But take the time to move around as you prepare for the exam and use different locations. I think this is a very interesting uh, study, but it's showing that moving around will help you um, retain the information better. Next slide, please. I'm going to say this several times because it's so critically important. Plan ahead. Get yourself organized. You want to be in the best possible place to be successful when you walk into that examination. Next slide, please. Your timeline. We suggest that four to six months before you plan to take the exam, you send in your application to qualify. And at that point, then you would begin studying using the HNCC recommended primary and secondary references. Two to three months before you plan to take the exam, send in your test registration. And then approximately four weeks prior to the beginning of the testing session, you receive notification materials from PTC that says you're ready to register. You want to contact the testing center to schedule your test date as soon as possible. This is important because, once again, the first people that can contact them have the first choices. And there are limited seatings in all, in all testing centers. Next slide, please. Choosing your references. We suggest the following three references as primary references. The first is the AHNCC Core Essentials. This document can be downloaded off our website at www.ahncc.org. These documents are located under the Resources page, and you scroll down and it talks about supporting documents. The AHNCC Core Essentials are available for both basic and advanced level um, applicants. The Core Essentials includes information about the holistic nursing standards and the practice competencies within those standards. Practice competencies are the practices we do as holistic nurses or maybe cardiac care nurses or pediatric nurses that are essential to our practice. Those core competencies can be found in the appendix of the HNCC basic and advanced core essential documents. The core competencies are because you will be tested on those items. The competencies are used to write the test items, so you need to know what they are. It's important that what you do is go in, download the core essentials document, go to the appendix, core competencies, review these competencies, highlight the ones that you want to follow up and study more. It will give you a very good place to start as you prepare for the exam. The AHNA Scope and Standards of Practice is the second reference that we really strongly recommend you get. Go to their website, www.ahna. You will be able to find the scope and standards of practice there. If you are um, utilizing the second edition, I strongly encourage you to read the first 20, 25 pages because it really gives you the meat of holistic nursing. It gives you the foundation and the context that those competencies are all embedded within. And then there are HNCC practice examinations. The value of these, they are offered through Professional Testing Corporation, is that they are online and computerized. They are set up within the format that you will be using when you take the national exam. And the blueprint or the breakdown of the items is the same as the national exam. For example, if the national exam has 10% of the items related to self-care, 
then you will see 10% of the items on the practice exam related to self-care. So it will make you more comfortable with the content, the format of the items, the type of questions that will be asked in the blueprint. These are your primary references. The second reference, references are listed in the handbook, which is accessible through the Professional Testing Corporation website or through our website. And there are several different references that can be used. Probably the most familiar reference is the Handbook for Holistic Nursing Practice used by Dossie, uh, written, excuse me, originally by Dossie and Keegan. There are different authors now, but you can utilize that book as a secondary reference. Next slide, please. <coughs> excuse me. HNA Scope and Standards of Holistic Nursing Practice tells us the who, what, where of our practice, and the foundation and context for our practice. So once again, this is an important document. It's a paperback text. It's very useful, and it will help you prepare for the exam. Next slide, please. So once again, plan ahead. Get yourself organized. Next slide, please. Plan accordingly. Listen to your inner wisdom. Plan what works for you. Pace yourself. And remember to work towards life balance. Don't study all the time. Don't play any time, all of the time, but rather find a balance between the two. Next slide, please. What's your primary mode of learning? Are you experiential? Do you have to have your hands and your eyes and your ears all working as you explore and experience something? Are you an auditory learner? Do you need to read information out loud to yourself or um, bounce ideas back and forth and network with colleagues? Or are you a visual learner? It's important to know what works best for you. If you're experiential, you may need to do exercises or activities with others or yourself, maybe note cards, highlighting. If you're auditory, you may need to read out loud. It's important that you know what works for you as you plan um, how you're going to prepare for this exam. Next slide, please. As you are thinking about who you are, listening to that inner wisdom, you're going to want to plan testing strategies. No one knows as well as you do what works for you. You're going to want to create a study plan. Maybe you plan to study two to three chapters every week. Maybe you plan to do it on Sunday afternoon with a cup of coffee on the back porch. Maybe um, you have to go to the library, but you want to get a plan started and you want to stick with it. Maybe you're an individual that would benefit from taking a preparation course or studying with colleagues in small groups. We have a lot more nurses now that are working in groups within hospitals or agencies as they prepare for the exam. They say it's a lot more fun and they learn a lot more um, and they enjoy the preparation. So if that might be something you would consider is asking a colleague, would you like to go for certification with me? You might want to take care of um, the information through note cards for things that are hard to retain or highlighting. And use positive affirmation. Put up note cards or sticky notes in your bathroom on the mirror or your bedroom door where you're going to see it regularly. And put in positive affirmations. I know what I need to know. I'm ready to take the exam. I'm doing what I need to do. I will be successful. And tell yourself that several times a day. Next slide, please. Take time to play and relax. It's critical for your mental, emotional, um, physical well-being, but it will also help you be better prepared for the exam. Next slide, please. Remember that life gets in the way, that we're throwing curveballs or that there are bumps in the journey. So. Make your plan, stick with it, you'll get around, get around those curveballs or those bumps, and you'll be prepared and ready to do what you need to do. Next slide, please. The goal is to feel confident, competent, prepared, ready, and to enjoy the process. We hear repeatedly from people how much they've enjoyed, how much they've learned as they prepare for the exam. And obviously, we don't want you to feel like this. Overwhelmed, stressed out, exhausted. Next slide, please. Creating a holistic self-care plan that works for you. This is important. What works for one person won't work for another. But it's important that you be compassionate and committed to yourself. During this process, self-awareness and self-reflection are very helpful. 
we uh, I mentioned earlier the opportunity to do the self-reflective assessment. That's a tool that you can use um, that people have found to be very helpful. Um, it helps them ground the knowledge and be pre better prepared for the exam. But once again, that's voluntary and optional. Mindful planning is important. Use the general reflection on your self-progress. Am I where I need to be? Am I happy with where I am? Is there something else that I need to do? Live in the moment. Never give up on yourself. You're worth it and you can do this. You're going to do a great job. Next slide, please. So you're wanting to nurture all of yourself as you're ready for certification. Believe in yourself. Utilize positive affirmations. Get organized. It allows your cognitive domain to be much more efficient and effective. Set a timetable. Review it. Am I where I need to be? Am I needing to add some things, do things differently? A checklist is very helpful. Pace yourself and study in blocks. You can't learn things in 30 second or 15 minute increments. You need to plan out time that you can do this preparation in a methodical, organized way so that you're in the best place when the examination time rolls around. Rest, sleep, relax, and take breaks. Next slide, please. Prior to the test day, read all the information and materials you receive from the Professional Testing Corporation. I would encourage you, strongly encourage you, to read it all as soon as it comes in. We have a tendency to not want to mess with a lot of text and narrative anymore. We want it fast and easy, but there's very important information in there. There's deadlines, there's things that you need to know about when you take the test. I would encourage you to read it as soon as it comes in. And then maybe within a month or you know, shortly before you take the exam. You don't want to miss deadlines. I, for example, payment I believe is due two weeks before you sit for the exam. And you don't want to miss your exam and lose out on your ability to recover that money. Know where you're going. The first day, um, the morning that you get up for the exam, you need to know where you're going. You don't want to learn that you were wrong or there was a uh, construction or something else that impeded your process. So know where you're going to sit for your exam. Schedule your test at the beginning of the testing session. If you do so and something occurs, you have the ability to give notification, I believe it's three business days before your test date, and you then can reschedule for no charge within that two-week period. So if you're scheduled on a Monday in the beginning of the testing session and you find out the, the <clears throat> week before that something has come up and you can't attend, you meet the business notification requirement. I think it's three days, and that's in your paperwork. You'll receive that information. You can reschedule without additional cost. Otherwise, if you cancel, you're going to lose your testing fee, and nobody wants to lose that money. And then get enough sleep the night before. Next slide, please. The day of the examination, make sure you feed your brain. Eat a good, healthy meal because your body will need that fuel to be able to utilize the knowledge you have and apply it for the examination. You can bring something with you that you can keep in your pocket that you can use to recenter yourself if needed. It might be a pebble. <clears throat> it might be a small picture. It might be a crystal. Make sure that you read the, <clears throat> excuse me, the information provided by the Professional Testing Corporation about what you can wear and what you can bring into the testing site. Security measures have gotten tighter as there's been a lot of cheating that's been going on with national examinations. And finally, show up early at the testing site. Then you can set your intention, get centered, and take some slow, extra deep breaths that will help you relax and show up in your best state to demonstrate and share what you already know. Next slide, please. Recertification for holistic nursing and nurse coaching occurs every five years, and there are requirements that have to be met. I need to say up front that you can always resit for the exam if that's how you want to renew your certification, but nobody ever wants to take that option. The other option is that you have to have an unrestricted RN license. You have to have 100 CE hours for that five years, and that's approximately 20 CEs per year. And you have to practice either one year full-time or 2,000 hours in the last five years. We have 
streamlined the process, so it's much easier now. It can be done electronically and sent in electronically. What I'm excited to say is that the CE hours can be 100 accredited, recognized CE hours related to holistic nursing and health. But there are so many other options for continuing competency at this time. They include things like preceptorship as a holistic nurse, being a a, on a committee for holistic nursing through AHNA or your healthcare organization, publishing, presenting, even attending um, webinars or programs that don't offer official CE hours can be used for continuing competency as long as you have the proper documentation. So we recognize that learning occurs in many different ways. We want to recognize that as you build knowledge base and your skills that allow you to show continuing competency and expertise in holistic nursing. I appreciate the time you spent with me today. Um, I'm always available by phone. We're available by email as well. And you can reach us through the website. Next slide, please. So I'd now like to open it up to any questions you might have. All right. At this time, if anybody does have any questions, you guys are welcome to press the code pound six onto your phone, and that will unmute your phone, so you are then able to ask any questions of Ms. Margaret Erickson from the AHNCC. Additionally, if you would like to type your question in to our chat box that is available on our freescreensharing.com, you are welcome to type your question in there, and we will be happy to read that question aloud. Thank you very much. 